Yo, yo, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy Chris coming at you with another episode to the Beautiful Struggle Podcast. This is episode number 96, where we talk about personal development and business all on one podcast. If that sounds like something that's interesting to you, feel free to subscribe and join the community. We drop a new episode every single Monday of the week. And you guys already know, if you guys have been listening for a while, we got a new special guest on the podcast. Going to be jumping on here talking about a couple things that we've never spoken on this podcast um, about before. Um, a little bit about my guest before we introduce him. He is the president of Michael Ferreira Custom Closing. He's the author of the book series t- titled The Perfect Gentleman's Pocketbook Guide. Um, He also has a YouTube channel where he speaks about everything from financial literacy, lifestyle tips, fashion. Um, I even seen that he had a video on there talking about um, giving you advice about car insurance. So he talks about everything, a lot of valuable information, um, a lot of good stuff to listen to. Um, Also, most importantly, he is a husband and a father. Welcome, everybody. Michael Ferreira, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic, brother. Thank you so much for having me here. This is going to be absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. Absolutely, man. I'm excited. Thank you for jumping on the podcast. Thank you for giving me a piece of your time. Um, You know, one thing I wanted to mention, in addition to everything we just spoke about, um, I was reading a little bit more about yourself, and you're also a professional scuba diver. Is that is that correct? Yeah, yeah. That's one of my hobbies that I've been doing. Yeah, yeah. Talk talk to us about uh, that. Thirteen years. Yeah, for the past 13 years now, I've been um, been scuba diving. It, it started out as a hobby and something that I just started to love and really enjoy. And I just started to learn more about it, uh, understand the you know the intricate details about it. Uh, got certified and just been diving across the world uh, wow. for wow, 13, 14 years now. Man, really? it's an absolutely exciting journey. So t- t- walk us through that experience of scuba diving because most of us on here. Are, are probably scared to do it or they just haven't done it yet. But walk us through like, you know, what are some of your favorite places that you went diving at? And, you know, what, yeah. what are some things that you need to be aware of while you're underwater? Yeah, well, you know, I, I'll, I'll tell you why, you know, scuba diving for me is, is, a, is a huge exhale, right? It's a way for me to get away from everything. Uh, you can't that. talk, right? Mm. You can communicate, mm. but, but you can't talk, right? Mm. You can, you can hear, animals you can hear sounds um but you cannot talk and for me as an entrepreneur and all of the aspects that i have and the multiple businesses that i run uh, my escape is going underwater right Mm. just leaving earth for a Mm. little bit right and just being able to escape and get away it started out really i was i was traveling somewhere mm, i want to say maybe it was hawaii and then i did it like oh this is cool let's just do it and i kept finding myself going to like do the test mm-hmm. course and i decided man i should just get certified so i did that That's and awesome. and as i was getting you know t- certified and tested to, to do this at a, at a higher level my instructors and my coaches were asking me like are you holding your breath underwater like why are, why why do you have so much air in your tank when you when you get mm-hmm. up and the reason was what they found out is that i was just extremely calm underwater and mm-hmm. and which what you should be right you should be right. calm you should be in a position to uh to, to to keep your ground you know keep your mental state and and it was i found that it was just peace for me right mm-hmm. so that's what evolved me and allowed me to just continue to learn and grow and do that at a high level is because it just gives me a sense of, of peace and that's my escape from mm-hmm. all the hectic things that can go on in the world absolutely i love that uh before we jump into your story and to your background and whatnot i just thought of a something that just came to my mind, you, you talked about, you know, peace and taking care of your, your mentals, your, your, your mind and whatnot, you know, uh, what are some other ways that you take care of your mental health as an entrepreneur? You know, it's something that we speak about a lot on this podcast, something that um, I have guests share their stories and share how they get through um, everything that we're going on in the world. You know, what are some of the ways that you take care of your mental health? You know, what we're definitely taught it's almost like as entrepreneurs we're trained that we need to be on the go hustling go 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 always on the go no team no sleep uh but we never really talk about how to take care of yourself mentally 
Yeah, you know, I think the mind is is the most important tool. Yeah, it's either, either the mind or the heart. But you know, you can't you can't have mind without heart. So I mean, I guess heart is first. But I think you could probably control your heart with your mind. Weird. Mm-hmm. That's a whole nother like mental state that I have. But I do believe like our psychology and our mentality is vital to our success in any aspect that we're in. So uh, I did it. It's, it's very intentional. I, right? mm-hmm. before I do anything, uh, every single day, it's just, you know, getting the mental focus for that day, for that moment. Uh, yes, we need to plan for the future. Yes. We need to know on our past successes and the things that have got us to where we are and where we're going. But I truly believe like the most important spaces and time is right now. Mm-hmm. So how can I live for right now? How can I be present right now? So, you know, the mental state, it's, it's just so vital, you know, prior to getting started, it's a moment of, of prayer and meditation of mm-hmm. just me, right? No phone, no text message. It's just staying in peace, breathing, uh, uh, getting to, to visualize mm-hmm. what I want to see and come out of this day and really just position it again for the right here, right now. Mm-hmm. Tomorrow will come, right? Yesterday is gone. Next year will come. Next week will come. We should plan financially. We should plan for our business. I get all of that. But the most important thing, I believe, is right now. So how can I train my mind, you know, my mind state for right now to be present in this moment? And that's one of the biggest things that I do is try to just stay right here. You know, even on on your podcast, there's so many other things that will happen in your life today, in my Mm -hmm. life today, other appointments, other meetings. But what's important is right now, right? right? Being able to give you love, giving that time, giving you that mentality that we can stay focused. So it's very intentional, right? Prayer, meditation, and just envisioning. And those are the three things that I do on a daily basis to make sure I'm very crystal clear on the long-term vision and the presence of now. No, that's awesome because uh, it's crazy. Just yesterday, I was, I was I picked up the Bible and I was reading it. There was this verse in there um, that was basically saying, talking about being present, being in the moment, and the worries and the troubles of tomorrow. They'll be there tomorrow. Don't worry about tomorrow. And, and, you know, what's going to go happen tomorrow, just be in the present, worry about today. And also reminds me, you know, when I talk to my mentor from time to time, she's always asking me, before we get started, what do you need to release and let out for you to be present in the moment? I need you to be here one-on-one with me. What do you need to talk about? What do you need to release? And um, it's it, it goes back to what you're saying, you know, to get the most out of these conversations and these relationships you really have to be present and in the moment. Yeah, no, it's vital, man. It's, it's, it's too important, man. It's, uh, we, we all have so many distractions of, of tweets and, and notifications and Facebook, Instagram, and the list goes on, man. But being present is, is so vital. So, so Absolutely. vital. Absolutely. Love it. Love it. So, man, talk us through your background, you know, your your journey as an entrepreneur, you growing up, um, you know, where did you, where, where are you from? Um, and let us know. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm originally from here in Los Angeles, California, and it's just great to be able to, you know, see individuals like yourself that have the drive and the hustle, you know, to do a lot of things like this, start brand new, start fresh, you know, mm-hmm. in the same spaces that, that that I know I started. I'm going on uh, seven, 16 years now um, mm-hmm. in my clothing business, but going on over 25 years as an entrepreneur, uh, I've been running companies since I was a kid. And, you know, growing up in in South Los Angeles, and then we moved to the Inland Empire, lived there for a while. And it's just, for for me, my parents, my parents are not from this country. My parents are from Belize, Central America. And, and, and we were, we were just always taught like, like all things are possible. And, and as weird as, as that may sound to some people, my my parents were the strange ones to say that you could do it. How can we support you? What, Mm. what can we, what can we provide? We may not have all the money. We may not have all the resources, but we could find it. We could help you. So, you know, having that, that type of love and care surround, surrounded my whole life is just like, you know, it it made me believe like literally Mm. I could do it. So at age 12, uh, you know, I, I, I was following my father's lead. And I started a DJ company. I was DJing on weekends. And then age 14, I really started generating revenue and money to where, you know, I was able to, you know, just have fun, enjoy life at a really young age, right? I, I trained my boys and we DJ parties and we just had a, a great, great time, very young, mm-hmm. uh, high school through college and all the above. While I was in college is where my passion 
for fashion really came about. Uh, you know, being tall, I wasn't able to just buy clothes off the rack and go shopping. So I decided to create my own cl own clothing, right? So I was like, what if this is possible? And again, with my mentality of thinking that it is, I just started to learn and go on a trajectory on how I can make it happen. And that's when I began the journey, right? I went to fashion school after, after my degree um, at UC Riverside in uh, mm -hmm. economics. But I went to fashion school to learn learn the craft, like learn how to sew, learn how to, to make pattern, learn how to do all of the intricate pieces in order to make me a better designer. And I knew that the creativity was always there, but I wanted to, to master your creativity by learning the craft and the technicalities behind it. I do believe like it's not necessary, right? You can, you know, you can do uh, fashion design without having the technical background. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's just, a, it was just personal, right? It was just personal for me to be in a position to learn, understand the craft and be more valuable and be a better designer. So um, along that journey, you know, with that, that degree in business economics, um, I, I started multiple companies in, in real estate investment advisory and, you know, my, my baby and my love and passion is, is my clothing company. And, mm -hmm. And, and what that's now evolving to is how I can provide more value in a holistic realm and being more of a lifestyle advisory and, and living the life that you truly believe um, mm. and that you desire to have rather than the, the, the journey or what society or, or parents mm. or friends tell you that you should have. All right. Mm -hmm. So this lifestyle consulting and advisory is what, what it's evolved into from all of my different businesses. But as a clothing designer, is, is where I get the most joy, right? Mm -hmm. Is where I get to, to show my, my, my greatest creativity um, and, and the ability to really just showcase the bold and loudness that I have built inside of me. So hopefully I answered a little bit. I'm happy yeah. to dive into some more questions and ideas, but uh, yeah. that's the gist of it in, in the entrepreneurship realm. Yeah, so we'll definitely dive into it, but you said a couple of things I wanted to unravel a little bit. You spoke about um, your parents coming from Belize, um, a different country, and them coming here and they really, you know, giving you that love and that 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 freedom to believe in yourself and to do and go after what you really want in your life. And it kind of reminds me of uh, my mother. You know, she's always been like that with myself, you know, always, you know, giving me love, always, you know, instilling that confidence in me, telling me that whatever you want to do to go after it and do it. And it's that's extremely valuable. And I think a lot of people may it take is. that for granted because there's all probably many more people out there that don't have that, you know, where mm -hmm. you just said it, you know, a lot of parents, they want to live through their children. You know, they want them to go to college. They want them to be a doctor, but that may not what the child wants to do. So I love that your parents were like, no, whatever you want to do, whatever you're passionate about, go ahead and do it and believe in yourself. Um, you know, and that's something else we can probably talk about as well, self-belief. But um, I love that mm -hmm. your parents was there for you um, and, and really believes in you. That, that's amazing. Yeah, absolutely, man. I, I never take it for granted. And I'm so yeah. grateful every single day, every single yeah. day. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, talk about um, that self-belief that you have in yourself, mm -hmm. because, again, that's something that I've been becoming more in tune with and realizing, mm -hmm. you know, the more self-belief in myself, it's just it makes me I would say a more powerful person, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and once you start believing in yourself, other people will start believing in you. So talk about that a little bit, that self-belief that you're supposed to have as an entrepreneur. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think, I think it definitely comes with time. I, 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 yeah. I it wasn't always this way. Right. It wasn't always this way for me. And, and although, that the children and I love I love kids so I use references to, to to children and babies and that children they don't have the distractions and the clutter and the negativity that is exposed mm -hmm. to us as adults right mm -hmm. they don't know about you know paying the bill know about uh, paying whatever the food they don't worry about food they don't worry about anything they want they just want to live enjoy mm -hmm. play have fun and do anything that their imagination can transpire right so mm -hmm. so that's just so vital and and, and as much as i'm a business owner I, I play so much i literally mm -hmm. the first thing that i think about every time every day that i wake up is how much fun can i have today 
while mm-hmm. making a lot of money in the process. But fun mm-hmm. is the most important thing because 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 it's the enjoyment of life is the most important thing that we can ever strive to achieve mm-hmm. because if there's enough money if there's if there's abundance of money and you're not healthy you're not enjoying it then it's all useless it doesn't really mm-hmm. matter so so fun and playfulness is just so important to my success as an entrepreneur so i, I share that the children's portion because they they own it all the way so for me growing up uh, i wasn't always as confident i was i was i was the the tall skinny scrawny kid that you know didn't always walk with his head up etc but after a while you just started to just own the fact that it is what it is right it's okay mm-hmm. to be uh skinny it's okay to be uh abnormally tall and stand out mm-hmm. above the crowd those things weren't really enjoyable for me as a very young person but after a while you just you just begin to own it and truly i came into that that self um, awareness you know, and still, still growing in it, really in college, right? In college, in my first year in college, it was very clear that the, the, the love, the mentality, and the benefits that my parents have instilled into my mind just positioned me for the world, if you will, right? The, mm-hmm. All the, the things that can come about uh, once you're on your own, once you're at, at a university, once you're, you're by yourself, do you figure out, do you decide, do you want to do things or not? when you're really on your own is when I really started to own the fact, like I could do this. Right. Mm. And, and, and I got this. And after a while, you know, you, after you hit bumps and bruises in life, uh, through, through business, through school, whatever you, you learn and those add to what you already know on top of your self-confidence and your self-awareness. But now my self-confidence and self-awareness is very intentional. I intentionally Mm. position myself to be in a situation where I can, actually like learn right I, I reflect every single day like what am i doing well what can i do mm-hmm. better and the things that made me great i i, I, I always as well start the day with like just you know the moment i look into the mirror like own it like owning the day and again i reference back to the right here right now like tomorrow mm-hmm. is great right tomorrow will come but how can i be great right now and be mm-hmm. great today only Right. So if I only focus on this every single day aspect of getting better every single day, maybe a 1% factor, I have a 1% mm-hmm. man mindset. Of like if I get 1% better every single day, mm-hmm. by the end of the year, I'm just drastically better than I was January 1. Yeah. Right. And then the following year after that, I continue to compound on my mentality, my success in my business. So the 1% factor is, is one, one strategy that I use. Uh, additionally, mm-hmm. as I mentioned, I, I tell myself like, you're great. Right. You, you, you got this. You could, you own this. You, you, you're, you're amazing. All right. Uh, you may see, I see this a lot from DJ Cali, just the same thing. He may see it on the mm-hmm. outside. But a lot of these individuals, like they tell themselves that, that they're mm-hmm. great, you know, out, mm-hmm. out, out of our mind, out of our heart is what comes out of our mouth. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's where we really need to speak out loud. Right. So I, I mm-hmm. intentionally tell myself that, you know, I could do it. So, all of those little pieces just continue to compound on each other that allows, and I feel like I'm all over the place a little bit, but all of these little pieces like compound in order yeah. to make me, you know, the person that I am that I continue to grow into, but owning it and just knowing like, you know, I got this, I can, I can do it. And the times that do come up where you feel a little bit, a little bit hesitant or you doubt mm-hmm. a bit, a strategy that I use to always get me back is you have to remind yourself of your past successes. And regardless of what stage we are in life, there are some successes that we have. And mm-hmm. so for me, one of those things, and I'll use an example like in my business arena, when I'm going to do something big, buy a new location, uh, get a new space for my, 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 my offices or my businesses, right? I remind myself of how I did it before. Like, remember that time when you didn't know how that you were going to start? Mm. You're 16 years in, bro. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then, and then, and then reminding myself, well, remember that time that you had that amazing, gigantic tax burden and you figured it out? Mm. You can do this again, Michael. <laughs> right. right. And then, and then remember the time where you were rushed and you had to deliver and you, 
whatever, whatever, and you got it done. And then I, I check myself and then I just walk with more and more confidence and just remind yourself of the past successes that you had. Because if you did it before, why can't you do it again? Okay. And then again, and then again, and then again, and then again. And that's how we just continue to compound and propel on our success. So that's how I build on this thing, man. You know, the mm-hmm. self-confidence, is, is you're not born with it, but you can develop it without a doubt. Absolutely. I, I, I love that. You know, um, for the listeners out there, if you guys listen to what Michael's saying, you know, a lot of what he's saying is these are just the really simple things that you can implement into your day. You know, it's you, you talked about speaking life into yourself, saying that you are good enough. You know, you are great. I can do this. Um, speaking life into yourself. A lot of, you know, people from our community, we speak death unto ourselves where we're saying, I, I can't do this. I'm not capable. I'm broke. You know, I'm poor. You know, that's not a growth mindset, you know, and I love that you speak life into yourself. You look yourself in the mirror and say, I can do this. Um, you even have that 1% better mentality. I, I do the same thing. I'm like, if I can get 1% better every single day, or at least learn one new thing every single day, the man that I am today is not going to be the same person a year from now. I'm going to be completely changed and evolved and elevated. So I love that. You know, right. like you said, like I was saying, some of these things that you're implementing, they're, they're so simple. Simple things you can do every single day to build up to the man that you are um, that you are now. Absolutely, man. Without yeah. a doubt. Without a doubt. Yeah, absolutely. So I know you said that you got into fashion at a pretty young age. I'm super curious. What... What like what got you into sp- fashion specifically? You, you you said you mentioned that you're tall, skinny. I'm pretty sure a lot of people are like, do you play basketball or something? Do you play sports? Yeah. But you went down the fashion route. What what drew you to that? Yeah, I, I did play basketball. I actually played basketball in college as well. And yes. and as I was there, I, I remember I remember as I, I always wanted something elevated. I wanted things to be unique. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't want to have every single thing to be exactly the same. So, which is why I got into designing unique, like one-off pieces. And in coming from the hip hop world where I DJ, mm-hmm. it was, you know, I was in, a, in an era where fashion and, and music, they always intertwine in some capacity. Oh, yeah. So, uh, so I always loved fashion, right? I always wanted mm-hmm. the, the newest, the coolest, the trendiest. But then again, mm-hmm. it hit me one time. I was like, man, what if I could just make my own stuff? How can I make my own things and present them and give them to the world? And and I was in I was in an economics class in college one day I remember, and it was about an hour and a half class, ninety minutes, and uh, I didn't I don't remember anything that happened, but I do remember drawing like my first mm-hmm. illustration of my logo in that class, and then I just like man I should continue to run with this, and then you know I mm-hmm. took it to digitizer and so forth, and then I I, I really just started to just do right mm-hmm. you know and you know before before we could like i just started to be a designer i just mm-hmm. started to implement and act as if i was already a designer mm-hmm. you know i just talked to my mom talked to friends and colleagues see if they could sell some stuff for me but really just having the desire to be unique and be an individual mm-hmm. was my 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 purpose of, of starting my own collection and being in a, a position to make individualized pieces you know i still mm-hmm. respect you know other brands um, and other things that they've done, but it's really along how we can use it, right? You know, mm-hmm. how we can style it and create it our own. And um, yeah. it, it it really wasn't a lot of, you know, Puff, Sean John at the time, you know, Fat Farm at the time were big, you know, mm-hmm. uh, Damon John, mm-hmm. but also always legendary uh, cross colors. Uh, all of those things were just like so instrumental to me being a, a black designer and wanting to, know that I could do it in a world of uh, Ralph Lauren's and Hugo mm-hmm. Bosses and, you know, these legendary names as well. But seeing people that were like me, you know, that could do it. That was definitely right. in, in inspirational. But but simultaneously, it was it was always like, how could I just be me? Like, how could I be my own entity and create my own pieces so that I could just display my weird creativity, ideas, so that other people may like them. Right. So uh, that's really how I, I got into it, just out of an idea of being unique mm. and being individual, because I think that's so important. Man, it's crazy that you brought that up. It's crazy that, you know, 
the world we live in, you can literally have a thought, an idea, and you can end up manifesting that thing into a physical business, uh, product, whatever it is. It's absolutely incredible, the, the power of the mind, for sure. Absolutely, yeah. man. Oh, no. You so you brought up some of the the legends in the in the fashion industry. Who are some of the fashion maybe influencers nowadays that you draw inspiration from? If there's any, or recently that you draw inspiration from? Because I know when it comes to art, mm-hmm. fashion, um, mm-hmm. you know we take things from a little bit of of, of everywhere. We like you said, you make it mm-hmm. your own. Yeah, yeah, and that's a great question, man. And this this question I, I get I get often and. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, it throws people off a little bit because it's, it's not always as much the the celebrity designers or, you know, uh, mm-hmm. fashion moguls that 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 give me a lot of the, the inspiration and motivation. I, I definitely, you know, admire other designers and respect other designers. But quite frankly, a lot of my inspiration and motivation comes from, like, my interaction with my existing clients and the mm-hmm. people that I serve and people in the world. Right. I truly believe that we all have unique characteristics and personality traits that make us individual superstars for the people that we serve. So mm-hmm. I, I work with a lot of high profile uh, attorneys and, and athletes. So when I'm working with these attorneys and doctors and, and, and investment advisors and bankers, they all have like some creative things about them. Uh, mm-hmm. And I try to just build on that. All right. Like, how can I serve them better? If you carry a unique pen or a unique like iPad or tablet, how can wow. I design for you for that pen to make your life easier and better? And that inspired me, like knowing that you carry this type of backpack and this type of, you know, tablet or mobile device. How can I make your wardrobe accommodate to your lifestyle to make you live better? That's how wow. I design. That's mm-hmm. how I design. That's where my inspiration comes. Like, what's what's weird and strange about your life that I could help your life be better, right? Mm-hmm. I have some ex ex FBI and some ex uh, uh, military guys that still carry weapons on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. So it inspires me to like be able to create a customized pocket or adjust their suits in the right way, so no one else knows that they have what they have on them. Right, Except right. the people that should him, me, yeah. I know because I made the suit or the wardrobe. But those like unique characteristics to when they put their jacket on, I know what's in there. Right, right, <laughs> but, right. But, you, you see them, you see them wearing <laughs> the suit. You're like, okay, I see you, I see you. That's right, that's right. I know what's in there, but the world right. doesn't. So that right. so my inspiration comes from from people, right? My inspiration comes mm-hmm. from the clients that I serve. Like, how can I make their lives better, their lives easier, so that they can just be better in the area that they're that they live in and that and the clients that they serve. Because cause, cause, cause my my vision of being a designer is, is to serve people. It's not for mm. just the, the coolest, awkward, weirdest thing. It's like, how can I use this to be valuable to my life mm. in order to generate more revenue, in order to help more people, to therefore I make this complete cycle of continuing to serve and continue to give. Because it's not about looking good, having cool wardrobe and being complete jerk or asshole right it's about Mm -hmm. being and looking good in your wardrobe so that you can be valuable to other people no absolutely it's funny because when you think of fashion you think of probably runways and you think of these extravagant unpractical items and Mm -hmm. pieces that people be wearing but i love that you want to provide value and you want to essentially solve people's pain points and problems you know whether it's it's a pen or an iPad or a weapon or whatever it is, something weird and quirky that they, they keep on them all the time. Um, you want to solve that pain point. That's crazy because you actually went ahead and answered my next question. I was going to say, you know, in, in a previous interview or uh, one of your videos, you said that you always have your client first in mind so you can understand what's important to them and deliver yeah. what they need. Um, I love yeah. that. You're, you're, you're really figuring out how you can solve a pain point for them. Yeah, yeah, and it's you know me as a designer, I love creating, but it's it's not for me, right? It's for it's for our clients that I serve, it's for the people that mm-hmm. buy my designs, and that's that's really what I I try to think about is how can I serve people with with, with my creativity. 
Absolutely. Now I'm curious, man, walk us through the process of you being a stylist and a fashion designer. What, what does that process look like? Um, you know, let's just say an NFL player comes to you and they want something custom. What are some of the things that you can do for them? What are some of the services you can provide? And what does that look like? What does that process look like for you? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for that. The, the, the idea really, I try to try to take my clients on a journey. And mm-hmm. really understand where the destination is. I try to find out what the end result is. And in my style, I work backwards. So knowing that we have this gala or this event or this uh, uh, show that's coming up, knowing that this is the the, the the goal, the destination, the end point or whatever it is, I figure out, okay, what, what is your vision? Of Go backwards, mm-hmm. right? understanding what the vision idea is. In most cases, a lot of my clients, they say, Michael, I came to you. I want you to just do it. And I love that. Mm-hmm. That's when I get to be my, my own entity and truly showcase the best the best parts of my ideas in my mind. But some individuals have ideas. So there I take their ideas and vision, knowing that the destination is here. You know, take their ideas and vision and then work backwards. And then from there, I, I bring it back again, talk about colors and talk about styles and talk about design. And then in the beginning stages, we at, at stage one, when you actually go backwards, I work from, you know, start with the end in mind, just go with the end result and then start from where we should be right here today. And then I go into like, you know, what fabrics we should choose and why. Uh, I explain the fabrics. Most of my, my, my items come from Western European countries, it is under France. And from there, uh, we pick. All of my stuff is hand cut and hand sewn. I do about 55 or 55 body measurements that's needed to make a, a, a great bespoke suit. Uh, 55? 55, right? Yeah, many wow, or more. Yeah. Right? It's in many cases. You're doing, you're a lot of things people huh? don't even think about. Yeah, but, yeah, right, but, right. but it's important to me and it's important to my tailor. So we take mm. way more detail than we need so that we can make you know perfect wardrobe and perfect pieces. Uh, and then mm-hmm. from there, you know, I take take body measurements. Then we we draft up the designs and styles. From there, I work with my tailors in, in ordering fabrics and constructing everything. My process is usually about thirty to forty five days to produce everything. Mm-hmm. However, we can do things really quickly. Uh, I've been, you know, uh, I've been in situations. I'm smiling just thinking about it right now, where I've done, you know, full custom pieces in seven to ten days. Um, it's not mm-hmm. very fun. My tailors and I are up really late at night, <laughs> but but we do it if we have to. And if, and if, if someone wants to, uh, you know, uh, 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 take us on, you know, in the level uh, that requires that to happen, we'll do it. Right. Mm-hmm. As long as it's, it's possible, we'll, we'll take that mm-hmm. on. But uh, traditionally, uh, we ask for a, a time frame that gives us the ability to truly construct something uh, beautifully from, from, from ground zero. Then from there, you know, we do a delivery, a, a fitting for the client that helps them to, you know, tell us any minor adjustments that they want. Anything that someone orders from us, they have lifetime alterations. As long as it's able to fit and work, we'll adjust it and, you know, make it perfect for whatever whatever their desires and needs are. And then from there, we just serve at a high level. Once once your event or your destination is done, it doesn't end there. We want to continue to serve. How can we do it again? How can we do your wardrobe for the year, for the you know, for, for the next 10 years, for a lifetime. And that's what we mm. want to serve. I always knew when I got into to fashion and, and lifestyle consulting, I know I was always in it for the long game, right? I'm not here to to be, you know, the one-off cool, trendy fashion designer. Right. Like, how can I be the one-off, trendy, cool fashion designer? But, you know, be here 30, 40 years from now. And, you know, very humbling to be going on uh, 15, 16 uh, years now. And it's, it's just a humbling blessing, man. I never take it for Absolutely. I'm curious to know while you're in this process, whether it's a seven day period or 45 day period, what, what's what's going on in your mind? Like, is it is this a flow state for you? Is it is it joy? Is it a lot of creativity? Is there any yeah. stress? What's what's going on as you're in like this state of where you need to create a custom piece for somebody? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I like I like the, the words that you use there. Uh, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's definitely. It's definitely a, a let I let let everything just just roll and flow as it's supposed mm-hmm. to. Uh, sometimes I still draw. I don't always draw as much uh, with the with the templates and things that I know that I already have. But when I do need to draw like unique pieces, I just start drawing. Right? It's not even a like I just start you know letting the pen. I draw more iPad now and on a tablet. But I just start letting it stroke. Right? And then after that, mm-hmm. it just starts to come to life. Uh, as I draw, I erase, I change things to make things come to okay. life. 
uh, because new ideas will uh, will come as I'm drawing and as I'm thinking about that person. So it's definitely a, a, a pace of just release, right? And just let everything flow. After mm-hmm. sometimes I just I look up and I'm like, man, I've been here for two hours, right? And it, it was just fun for me. And awesome. it's it, again, it's, it's it's so much joy that I get about about doing you know something that you love that uh, it's hard to call it work. You know, it, it sounds yeah. cliche and cheesy. You know, we do work. I do work. I do. You know, wake up early. I do you know, make sure things are on time. I do email. I do all those technical stuff. But but when when I deliver a suit, it just never gets old. <laughs> it never gets old. Like seeing awesome. the suit go on, like knowing what's on the inside of it, the interior, the linings, the buttons, the buttonhole thread, all of these little things that mm-hmm. most people don't think about. I do, and 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 when I deliver it to a client, it just it just never gets old, <laughs> and I love mm-hmm. it every single time. Talk, talk to us about maybe recently one of the pieces that you created that you really enjoyed or something unique that you created. You're like, wow, that, that's pretty dope that we did that. What was something unique that you created recently um, in, in your perspective? Yeah, yeah. So so many of us are, are familiar with the, with the new Space Jam movie that, that just came out, um, the legacy mm-hmm. movie with LeBron. And um, so I had a client, that, uh, a couple of clients actually that was going to the event. And I knew I wanted to incorporate like like the history of the first Space Jam and the second mm-hmm. Space Jam. So I'll see if I can find some photos, I'll send it to you. But yeah. I wanted to like reenact and create like a mesh between like the new and the old. So, yeah. you know, going on the straight carpet, I wanted to do something like really bold. So we did like this orange like blazer, not blazer, but a, a orange like jacket suit deal. But on the inside, we did the lining to be like an interior of a mesh between the old Space Jam and the new Space Jam. And like mm-hmm. creating like a unique piece like that to tell the story of, oh, yeah. you know, to tell the story of the past and the new was just really fun for me. You know, so mm-hmm. just being in a position to create something like that is fun. Oftentimes, people don't get to see the whole out the whole aspect because most people mm-hmm. don't walk around with their jacket open. Uh, but it is a fun piece to to do, right? And mm-hmm. knowing that someone is able to do it, and when they do get to showcase it and wear it, it's uh it's pretty fun. So so doing something like that is fun, like getting able to tell the stories. Um, another piece we did, something for BET, was pretty cool as well. Um, I was able to do like some fourteen karat gold buttons on the jacket. That was wow. amazing. That was really that was really fun as well. Going over the top uh, for, for a unique piece like that. So man, so many stories that I'm thinking of. Yeah, but yeah. but but the Space Jam uh, one. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, awesome. it ties in. It ties in. You know, both as both aspects of the old and the new. Because I'm, I'm a huge Jordan fan, and I love mm-hmm. LeBron as well. So you know, it's like those it are the best of both worlds. And then rocking mm-hmm. the Space Jam Jordans, the original Space Jam Jordans that he wore. In the first oh, wow. first movie, that was dope in com- combo yeah. with the uh, with the suit. That was just my idea in making that, that wow. come to life. Man, that's dope. That's dope. Um, man, I had a question about with you being in the, the fashion industry for 15, 20, 25 years, being an a entrepreneur. You know, what are some struggles and challenges that you had to overcome being in this space? Um, I can only imagine you had your, your fair share of things that you had to overcome. You know, talk about some of the early struggles that you had to overcome um, to be where you're at. Yeah, I think, I think the biggest one, which all of us have or, you know, will deal with at some point in time. And we talked about this earlier, just the mentality, right? Mm-hmm. Like the mental state. Mm-hmm. That's that was that was the biggest thing, you know. Knowing that I was selling a high price luxury product, I had to wrap my mind around the fact that I could do it, and mm-hmm. and knowing that it was okay to 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 charge this much, and being in a mm-hmm. position to know that I'm worth that much, and that my brand was something that I was building for the long term, and not just a one off rush, you mm-hmm. know, quick money scheme or something like that. I knew that I was I wanted to do it for the long term. So wrapping my mind around it, like that was the biggest thing. You know, that was the biggest struggle. Like, can I do this? Right? Mm-hmm. As much as I, you know, believed big and you know thought big, it was it would always it would always hit me in the beginning. Like even like mm-hmm. the first two or three years, like you know, is it possible? Can I do this? Is this okay? 
And just knowing like all of those things were in my mind, just getting that out. And really at like year two, year three is when I was like, man, not, this is what it is, man. I got to mm-hmm. just enjoy it. I got to live life. And again, coming back to the live right now, like be in the moment. And, and I just learned, right? I just learned over time. You just learn different things. You learn how to, uh, how to cut better. You know how to tweak things a little bit better. You learn, you know, different relationships. So the biggest struggle was was for me in the beginning was the mind, like getting out of my head and overthinking stuff and thinking if, it's, if you can, if it's possible, and so on. And once that got out, got got out, then it made it a little bit easier. Then simultaneously, like after you you do that, you know, full transparency in the aspect, you know, it just comes down to the finances side, like mm-hmm. how you can continue to to fund this dream and and build this dream of, uh, you know, with your own capital. Um, I, I still haven't taken any capital on my business completely. Um, I mm-hmm. want to uh, continue to do that as long as I can. And I, I truly believe that I can, but there are strategies to, to bring it on capital, which right. I've learned you know, throughout the uh, throughout this time as well. So so only my entity in a whole time, we're just figuring out like the funding part. Like there's times where it was like, man, we, we got to deliver this to this product, we got to deliver this, this season, this collection, we got to deliver this to the, to the person. They don't care about, you know, my money mm-hmm. situation or financial challenge. Mm-hmm. I just have to deliver the product that I promised that I would deliver to them and we're going to do it. Right. So there's mm-hmm. been, you know, many times where that was the case early on. And again, you remind yourself of the things that you accomplish. Once you're able to just figure out and you do it, it just it propels and it, it positions you to have the right mental state to carry on in the future. So, you know, the financial challenge is, is always there when you're doing it on your own and, you you know, you mm-hmm. don't just get capital or have a bunch of investors. I know I wanted to own it, you know, on my own. So just taking that on and being in a position to just so uh, to just continue to grow. And then after you start generating revenue and money, you know, there's mm-hmm. other the, 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 it's so funny, right? Uh, you think, you know, once you have more money, it just it makes it easier. It does. It does no lie right, about right. that. It does. Once you have more revenue, it does help. But then, you know, the, the legendary song, More Money, More Problems. I don't really call it problems. I do think that you have uh, more money, more challenges, more opportunities. Mm. Uh, I love but, that. But, but, but the challenges, you know, and the opportunities, they're fun as well. Because when you start mm-hmm. generating revenue, you know, a different ball game is now Texas, right? <laughs> Texas is another beast that I think mm-hmm. a lot of young entrepreneurs overlook and mm-hmm. um, individuals that are starting in business overlook. Like taxes are just so important that it can like make or break or kill a business. And that was a challenge. You can't, you can't avoid it. Yeah. You can't avoid it, right? And it's you can't uh, you can't avoid taxes or debt. You got to you got to plan for it, right? You, there's no yeah. way to avoid it. You just got to plan for it. And once I had to wrap my mind about like, oh, okay, you made money, a lot of money, that means you pay a lot of taxes. <laughs> so you got to figure that out as well. And there are ways right, to reduce right. them, minimize them, and so on. But uh, but that was another challenge as well. So. I mean, the, the, the challenges and the struggles that we talk here on the, the beautiful struggle, right? It is a beautiful struggle yeah. because now I'm, I'm in a beautiful place to where, you know, yeah. I'm able to continue to grow. There probably will be more challenges and things that will come up that I haven't even experienced yet. But yeah. for me, like, that's the, that's, the, that's the enjoyment. Like, that's the drive. Like, that's the, the hustle, the, the opportunity yeah. that I get to learn. And I get to figure something else out to continue to grow and build this brand of Michael Ferrer. And I just love it so much. No, absolutely. And it's, it's amazing because with all the knowledge, and everything that you've been through, taxes, you know, the mindset, everything that you've been through as you're in your entrepreneurial journey and you've been learning and you've been growing. It's amazing because now you can turn around and teach other people, you know, how to avoid the mistakes that you made or just help other people with certain things. Right. And that's absolutely. where I think I yeah. think that's where the, the, the YouTube channel comes in. And mm-hmm. you speak on a lot of different topics on there as well. And I think I think it's amazing because when I watch when I'm watching your YouTube channel and I'm looking at these videos, I'm like, man, this would have been super dope for me to have when I was when I was a young man, when I was like 18, 19, trying to figure it out, trying to you know, having all these questions and really have 
that person to go to but here you are like sharing game and value on like everything you know from, yeah yeah like i said yeah. money finances everything i love it and that's why i say it's, a, it's about how we can give and and this this brand of michael ferrera uh, uh clothing is evolving to so much more and this lifestyle consulting advisory i'm, I'm not sure and i'm okay with with, with saying that out loud mm -hmm. right i'm not sure exactly what it is but with all of the the information and things that I've learned throughout the years, I I don't I don't have any any job experience, right? I don't, I don't have a, a corporate job. I've always been an entrepreneur. They, you know, I've only run businesses at this point. I have six entities that I own, and those experiences just allow me to be valuable to other people. And I have no no shame or shy about 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 doing that which is why, you know, on YouTube, it may look like it's all over the place, but it's very intentional, right? Right. Lifestyle, right? Living the life that you desire, which is why I call my channel Style Your Life, right? Style, create, invent, do and be whatever you want in life, right? Style your life to whatever you want it to be. Not what society, parents or schools or books tell you that it's supposed to be. Go to school, go to college, get a degree, get a job, pay bills, wake up and do it all in my life. That's never, never been, that's never been my desire. I feel like we should just live life and have fun. <laughs> it mm -hmm. sounds so stupid and so childish. But at the same time, that's literally what all life is about. It's about the enjoyment of it. it the, 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 the short period that we live on this earth is so tiny to the, to the existence of earth. If we take it, even if we just look at 2000, right? To, 2021 even if we just take that time not even before that that's 2000 years even if if someone lives to 100 110 110 on the the timeline of 2021 is so tiny it's like a dot it's like it's, it's like it's so it's so tiny right on the existence of earth so so why should we try to, you know, do all of these things that other people tell us to do mm. when the, the, the timeline or the dot on the 2021, even if you live to 100, if you live to 80 or 60, that's even less. The mm. dot in the infinite moment that we live on this earth is so tiny. Why not we just yeah. make the best of it while we're here? Yeah. And that's truly yeah. how I will live. And that's mm. why I do style your life. No, I love that. And if you if you want to even take it a step further, talking about spiritually, you know, the it depends on what you believe in i believe you know in heaven in that and, and it will live in eternal life you know that eternal life compared to like the time you spent on earth like you said it you said it's a dot. It's probably like it's probably like without half a, a dot 100 <laughs> percent, without a doubt and that, and that's why we have to just maximize the time that we're here mm -hmm. right there's you know we there's doubt uh you know there, there's fear at times but we can't let those doubts and those fear control us even even the greatest person has it right Bill Gates still has fear, right? Yeah. It, it yeah. may not be the fears that other people have, and his fears may be very uh, short, you know, but and very tiny. Now, that's one thing I learned. I learned from uh, from Tony. I learned that from Tony Robbins. It's like you just have to make it short. It's okay to have the doubt, but how can you have the doubt? Cut it, make it short, get it out the way, mm -hmm. and move on. Right. Mm -hmm. Same mm -hmm. thing with the fear. It's okay to have the short fear, but how can I make the fear short? Doubt, get it out the way, and move on. So that we don't have the, the clutter that can stop us from being the person that we truly want to be. Absolutely. So wrapping this thing up, I got a couple more questions for you. One thing I definitely wanted to ask, you've been an entrepreneur uh, for 25 plus years. You know, back when you were in entrepreneurship, it probably wasn't even, you know, a common thing. It probably wasn't even mm -hmm. thing that somebody yeah. wanted to be. If you fast forward now today, entrepreneurship is is like a cool thing. Right. It's yeah, everybody wants to right. be a business yeah. owner. I yeah, want to know your yeah. perspective on everything that's going on is entrepreneurship, influencers, all like people having job or people making a career out of anything. I want to know yeah. your perspective on all of this craziness. Man, that's that's funny that you asked that. You know, I, I do think that the entrepreneurship asset is cool right now. And that's fine. Entrepreneurship will always be be cool in some capacity. But um you know, I, I, I truly, you know, encourage people to just own it. Like, if you are an entrepreneur, that's fine. Like, own that all the way, right? Not just, uh, you know, got fired last week. 
uh, entrepreneur next day, right, or or whatever it may be, uh, because there's there's a lot a lot of dedication and commitment. I think mm-hmm. entrepreneurship and 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 business and success is it's not even about the, the cool factor. It's about the discipline factor, right? How disciplined can you be and dedicated to your craft and dedicated to your element and disciplined to doing the work when you don't really want to do it in order to be successful. So uh, I'll never hate on it, right? But I, I do think that that entrepreneurship is a word that's uh, used more freely than it was in the past. You know, entrepreneurship, entrepreneur is the one that, that's willing to take the risk, willing to, to be dare, daring and, and bold and, and jump out of the limb and, and jump off of the cliff, hoping that there's water down there. Right. <laughs> it looks like there's water down there and it probably is. <laughs> mm. But, you know, uh, not 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 in any other aspect. So I, I never never did d- diminish it. But I definitely think entrepreneurship is a word that's that's overused and probably shouldn't be used uh, in, in many cases. But but if you are like own it and just embrace it, you know, because it's, it's something that I, I hold true in my heart and know that there's a lot of ups and downs that come with it. But you can always win. Absolutely. So wrapping this thing up, man, um, I truly appreciate you coming on the podcast. Definitely had a great time today. Is there anything that you wanted to speak on before we, we head out of here? Anything that you want to say? Yeah, I mean, I think the main thing is is, is remembering, you know, remembering to, to be here, right? Be present in the mm-hmm. now. And, and I've said it multiple times today. Uh, be present in the now. Enjoy the moment and truly style your life like style mm-hmm. the life that you desire that you want to create um if it is a time period where you need a job to get what you need there's nothing wrong with that there's mm-hmm. nothing wrong with having a job there's nothing wrong with you know paying paying bills and getting your necessities that you need for your life and your family but yeah. you know simultaneously the enjoyment of life is so important right mm-hmm. you 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 work so that you can live your life Right. You don't have to work to, in order to pay bills, work to do things. You work to live the life if, that you desire. Right. Maybe that's mm-hmm. family. Maybe that's friends. That's play. That's travel, whatever it is. So I just encourage individuals like to just believe, you know, big and gigantic and enormous because it is possible if you truly believe it and a big mm-hmm. if you truly believe it. Because if you don't, then it's only believable to as much as you believe. Mm-hmm. And that's okay. it. That that's really it, you know, and uh, and always stay connected, you know. Of course, uh, with me on on all the all the locations and so forth. Mm-hmm. Now, I was gonna say, usually I have my guests leave the audience with one last piece of advice. I have everybody do it, but mm-hmm. I love what you just said. I think we're gonna end it on that note. I'm not gonna make yeah. you come up with anything else. <laughs> that was great. Yeah. Um, with with that being said, again, I really appreciate you coming on the podcast. Let the people know where they can find you, where they can reach out to you. If they have any questions about uh, your services, let them know. And I'll leave the de- I'll leave everything in the description of this podcast as well. Absolutely. And, and, and that's what it is, right? The hashtag that I leave with all the time is hashtag believe big uh, because mm-hmm. that's that's what we, we should uh, do. And the best way to connect with me is, is all social media. But my, my main platforms is michaelferrer.com. Uh, and, and and you'll see the link in, in the show notes mm-hmm. and so forth. But uh, primarily to get my overall entities is michaelferreira.me. So michaelferreira.me gives you everything that I do inside of the community for my philanthropic work, uh, community, uh, church, uh, uh, nonprofits, um, clothing, finances, wealth, advisory, so many different places. But michaelferreira.me and in every place, social media, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Michael Ferreira, we own all of them. And it was very intentional in doing that. So that's how people can find me. Amazing. You guys heard how amazing this podcast was. Please feel free to share it with one other person that needs to hear this information. Leave a rating and review. And on that note, it's your boy, Chris. I'll catch you guys next week.